So welcome to my YouTube channel. That's what we call The Good Life. Today I'm gonna to be talking about chitting potatoes, the reason why you chit them and how you chit them and some successful ways of doing it so you get a really, really good crop. I just wanna say a massive, massive thank you to all the people that subscribe to my channel and the recent comments I've had because some people have been watching me for quite a while now. We've got over 8,000 subscribers. So I'm really, really grateful for that. And it's lovely to hear all your comments and that you've got so much out of it over the last few years that we've been doing it. And in particular, I wanted to say a special thank you to someone called Deg, who actually you can make a voluntary contribution um, of an amount that you think is appropriate. And we don't ask anyone to do that, but when people do do it, that is really, really, I'm really, really grateful for that. I really do appreciate it. But that's not why I do it. I do it to help people grow their own fruit and vegetables. So if you've not already subscribed, um, please do so. It's completely free of charge to watch this channel and you'll get loads of helpful hints and tips all throughout the year from my home garden, my allotment and from time to time in my home kitchen. Now let's get on to chitting and the reason why we chit. So some people do and some people don't, but the reason we chit, and most experienced gardeners do, is that it helps you get better crops. So they're more plentiful, they're less likely to be susceptible to disease, um, and all sorts of other things, and you're more likely to get a better crop as well. Basically, chitting gives you a head start because you're starting the sprouting process, and that's why you do it. Um, another thing, while you could grow potatoes from your supermarket, I would recommend getting them from a garden centre because you can choose what variety, um, they're proper disease resistant ones, um, and you're more likely to be successful as well. So I would always get mine from a garden centre. But if you want to try something else, that's completely up to you. So I've got three varieties that I've chosen um, that are particularly good for my, where I live because um, we're susceptible to a lot of wireworm, and they're also varieties that I enjoy eating. I've got Charlotte Kestrel and Maris Piper. Um, the reason I've grown those is because Charlotte and the Kestrel grow particularly well in my soil because like I said we get quite a bit of wireworm and they're quite, you know, nothing can stop disease but some are more tolerant than others. Um, and my main crop potatoes last year, which I can't remember what they were, but I got a lot of wireworm so I looked for a main crop um, that were more resilient to the wireworm and Maris Piper ticked that box. Um, I don't do a first early, but I put my, my first lot of second earlies in early and it always works really well for me. So what you need to um, start chitting, so there's a selection of things you can use. There's the good old favourite egg boxes, which lots of people use. And if you've got enough, that's absolutely fantastic. But if you haven't, you don't have to do it in egg boxes. I sometimes use a shallow tray. Um, you can use little trays like that. What you don't want is anything with high sides. So you want to make sure that the light gets to it because that's really, really important. Um, so if you do have a box, you could just cut it down. Um, if I'm using plastic, I genuinely put a little bit of newspaper down just because I don't want it direct on the plastic. I don't know if that makes a difference or not, but that's just one of the housekeeping things I do. Um, if you can get the big trays, and every year I do have the bigger trays and I forget to save them, even me, I forget to save them. Um, try and remember to save some of those big trays that you can get with eggs on because they're really handy. But all I've got is these today. So obviously just cut the, because you obviously don't need that side. Although you could use that other side if you're running out of space. So you want you want the bit with the little modules in. And the reason you want that is because it's really easy to stand the potatoes up in it. So you could always ask friends and family to save their egg boxes for you if you if you don't get through enough eggs. I normally have quite a good stock. I have had chickens, but I'm in between chickens at the moment because sadly a fox got by. So the, the how you chit, um, the conditions are really important. A lot of people make the mistake of putting them in a dark, warm place or a dark, cold place. Um, that's not going to create the right environment for them. In fact, your um, you know, your shoots may become quite leggy and that's the last thing you want. You want little stubby, strong um, little shoots coming off. Um, and the way you put them in is you do rows end up. Now the rows end is basically the end that's generally got more shoots on it. And the reason using a neck box is so handy is because the shape of it. So you just stand them up like that. Like so, so it's ever so easy. That's why using a neck box is a super easy way of doing it because of the shape of the boxes. Um, but if you don't, you just do the best you can in a tray. I've done it loads of times just in big trays like that. And again, if you've got large quantities, 
Um, then obviously egg boxes, you need a lot of them and you definitely need the big trays. Another really important thing to do, especially if you're like me and you're growing more than one type of potato, is do remember to label them. We all think we're going to remember and we never ever do. So please, please, please do remember to label them because obviously um, the earlier ones you would dig first in your main crop you would leave in longer. So typically I would dig my Charlotte first, my Kestrel second and then my Maris Piper third. Um, and obviously you put them in in different order. I would put the Charlottes in first, my Maris Piper, sorry, my Kestrel would follow a couple of weeks later and then my Maris Piper a few weeks after that. So again, really, really important that you label them because if you start digging up your Maris Piper too early, um, you you know, it's just it's just not what you want really so we've got two more tips to come and they're probably the most two important ones um, a lot of people have been asking about what books you can read about getting better at gardening um, a lot month by month is a really really good one that lots and lots of people use so there will be a link up on the screen and we will pop one in the description if you feel you need to be learning a little bit more and need kind of like a manual to get you started now back to the really important shitting things now when do you chit about six to eight weeks before you intend to plant them so you know mid january to mid february is the optimum time to start chitting um to get the best you know to get the best sprouts and the best growth for your potatoes the other thing which is the all important where do i chit my potatoes where's the best place and um, this is where a lot of people go wrong they think they need to keep them in dark places or warm places or all sorts of weird and wonderful places and um, the most most important thing is that they are frost free because if frost gets on your potatoes they will undoubtedly be ruined or you really risk ruining them they also need to be in a cool um, and light place um, but not direct sunlight east facing is perfect so if you've got a cool facing um, east window or like myself I can face mine in an easterly direction um, that would be absolutely perfect I keep mine in my um, conservatory because we don't heat it during the winter and um, but we know it's definitely definitely frost free so for us it's the perfect perfect spot and um, for you it might be somewhere different but yeah just try and think of those factors you know cool light frost free um, are going to be the best places east facing if at all possible now i do hope that's inspired you to get chitting i'd love to know what potatoes you're going to be growing this year and i'd also like to know if you're new to um, planting potatoes um, and if it's inspired you to get planting